Welcome back to our channel and to Kalahari Safari. Watch and listen as zoologist and safari guide Yaku explains how the sociable weaver survive and thrive in the Kalahari Desert. We've included a spectacular moment of a swarm of these birds at a waterhole and the attack of one of the fastest birds in the world, a Lana falcon. There are lots of surprises for first time visitors to the Kalahari and few as awe-inspiring as the sighting of a big sociable weaver nest in the top of a tree. It's hard to imagine that this big nest was built by small birds. Now the gregarious nature of sociable weavers is what gave rise to their name. And in these big nests they can live anything from 200 to 400 birds. All have individual openings, so each pair has an individual opening at the bottom and this leads up into their nesting chamber in the upper part of the nest and the big roof is extended all the way around and is aimed at keeping predators out so it's supposed to keep them safe when they nest of course this is not all that successful because predators adapt such as a cape cobra that adapted so well that it can actually approach a nest from the top and then find branches to hang closer to the underside of the nest and then because it has such a a long body it's able to hold on to the branch with his tail and put the front part of his body and his head into one of these nest openings all the way up to the top and then raid the nest of chicks and eggs so they're not as safe as they believe to be the sociable weavers roost or nest in this tree so even outside the breeding season they do roost in this big nest the sociable weavers nest in areas where dune reed is readily available. So it's one specific type of grass, more a reed type than a grass, that is ideal for the building of the nest. In areas where there's no dune reed, you don't easily find any sociable weavers building nests. So the lining is done with all kinds of softer grasses and feathers, anything soft, but the actual building of the nest rely quite heavily on the dune reed itself. Now the dune reed is quite a heavy grass so you can imagine if a whole big nest is built the nest can weigh in excess of a, a metric ton which is a massive weight on the tree and the trees are very strong slow growing trees that have very very strong and hard trunks that can sustain the weight of this big nest but of course, if other factors are involved, such as the nest in rain, get wet, then the water can go through into this bark and start to rot the, the, the fork of the tree, which can then collapse the trunk due to the weight of the, the nest. Now, they quite often share their big nest with other inhabitants, such as pygmy falcons. The pygmy falcon is not much bigger than a sociable weaver and they would occupy unoccupied nests so they would use the same opening go right up into the the nesting chamber and they would nest right there with the sociable weavers so when you walk under this nest and you want to see which one belongs to the to the pygmy falcon it's quite easy you just look for the one with a really messy opening because the sociable weavers are able to shoot their droppings from their nesting chamber right down through the entrance way to the ground without hitting the sides the pygmy falcon is not that accurate so the pygmy falcon regularly hit the edges of the opening so you find an opening with all these droppings hanging from it and you know that belongs to the pygmy falcon the messy home is the one of the pygmy falcon and the clean entrance ways of the sociable weavers are then very clear to see Protection in numbers seems the favoured strategy for the sociable weaver, not only at the nest, but also when at a waterhole. As seen here, these birds move in a swarm between the waterhole and the nearby tree. Intricate calls and quick movement determine the direction of the swarm. There is a justifiable need for this behaviour. The Lana falcon is a medium-sized bird of prey that breeds in Africa, Southeast Europe and just into Asia. This falcon is a bird of open country and savanna which suits its diet and hunting style. The lana falcon preys on birds. 
It usually hunts by horizontal pursuit and takes its bird prey in flight. What you're about to see here is a Lana falcon approaching the swarm at a speed of about 89 miles per hour. As it bombs into the swarm, it will either try to catch, but more likely stun a small bird or two on the approach. It will then do a flyby and recover the stunned prey with its strong and very sharp talons. The falcon will then perch in a tree nearby and feed. However, in this instance, from what we could see, it was not successful on the first strike. We hope you enjoyed watching our video. Please subscribe to Ultimate Safari to watch future videos.